Hi and welcome to this demo of how to create a Gantt chart and you're going to need to be able to create a Gantt chart to complete the milestone task of your GCSE ICT controlled assessment coursework. Now what I've got here is a demo really of, or an example of what a good Gantt chart might look like and you can see that it's made up of several components, stages and milestones which are the things that you actually have to complete in your project, the resources which are the things that you need to help you complete the stages and the milestones and then I've got the dates that show how long my project is going to take and then I've used bars to plot each milestone how long I think it's going to take and you can see the start and the end dates of each milestone and you can see then from my particular example that I've got a task that's starting on the 8th of February and is finishing on the 18th of April. So you're going to need to put something very similar together for your work and it's very simple. I'm doing this in Google Sheets and that's how you could do it as well. And we begin always with our milestones and stages. So remember stages are the key tasks that you need to do to complete the work. Now in this case I've done a website project. So I've, I've split my stages into research, planning, create, website, test and evaluate. And then each one of those stages has milestones, which are the subtasks, if you like, the things that I have to break the stage down into in order to complete it. And I've got the stages in red text to make it a bit more clear, and the milestones in black. And in column B, I've got the resources, and you can see that's fairly straightforward. I've just thought about what I'm going to need in order to complete each task. So this really is your first job on your spreadsheet, is in your first two columns you would put your stages and your milestones, then have a think about the resources that you think you would need, the teacher can't tell you, you need to think what you're going to use yourself, and you're going to put those things in. Now what I would then need to be thinking about is the dates involved. Now your teacher will give you the deadline for your coursework and you're just going to try and estimate how long you think it's going to get you to take each complete each task. So I'm going to begin from the beginning, which is a sensible place to, to start from, and I'm going to put the 8th of February in this date here. Now I've put the 8th in because that is a Monday, so it makes more sense to use the Monday as the start of my weeks because that's obviously when the school week starts. So I've used 8th of February and that goes in there in that format. Now my next job would be to work out now how to put the dates in all the columns across here. There's an easy way to do that and that's just by doing a really simple formula. So if I just click here and I go equals that date and then I add 7 to it, there we go, it gives you the next week and then I can just copy that all the way along there and that takes you all the way along to the 18th of April. And and you can see now that I could continue, if I wanted to, to make that date, end date longer, I could keep dragging it to the right. But I've mapped in my dates already. And then the next stage is really just very simple. I need to work out how I'm going to put my bars across. Now let's just go back and look at the original for a minute, and you can see what I've thought of. You notice that the, the shape of your Gantt chart kind of goes down, almost as if it's like a flight of stairs. And that's logical, because there's a lot of tasks that you can't start until the previous task has finished. So for instance, I can't create my website here, which begins on the 7th of, of, of March, until I've planned it, the task that I've started on the 22nd of February. There are some tasks here, you notice here, I think I could create a test plan at the same time that I've collated the results of my work. Now that might be, actually that's probably a mistake, I should really have, have, have made the test plan more sensible to start it there, wouldn't it, when I know exactly what my research has told me about my website and I've started to design it. But that's how easy it is just to move things along. I'm just using, as you can see, the, the paint pot and fill option just to fill in the individual cells of my spreadsheet. And you would need to work out which tasks could be done at the same time. So I've got two tasks, the storyboarding and the photos. I think I could do both those in the same week. And which tasks I can't do until the previous task is finished. So all I'm going to do really is choose, I'm not going to do this in a particularly scientific way, choose a colour, orange because I like orange, and then I'm going to map 
those in. Just fill them in like that. So fill goes there. And my cert, I'm going to issue my server next week. And I just carry that on until my chart is full. So that's the process of how it's done. It shows you the skills that you need. And it's very few IT skills you need to make the chart. But you need to do the work of planning out where you, how long you think each task is going to take. And you are going to need to do the task of breaking your work down into stages and milestones. The stages will be obvious because you've got different ICT tasks to complete. And the milestones will be the individual tasks that you need to do in order to complete each one of those. So remember that you're going to work out what to put in that left column. The resources, you can see the kind of things I've put. I've put things like planning, a Google form, software information that I might need. I could have put teacher help in there if I didn't know how to do a particular skill. I could do that as well. And so what I would want you to be able to do, what you will need to be able to do, is have a complete plan. And it's a plan. There's nothing to say that it's going to go perfectly. And you might deviate from this if you need to, because things happen that mean we can't always follow a plan. But you need at the start to have had a go at least of planning this project out. And then when you have a complete plan, you're going to be able to screenshot that add it to a document and then just do a little bit of writing about what it shows. So hopefully you've understood how to do a gun chart from my video. If you haven't, I suggest you rewind and maybe watch watch bits again at your own at your own pace. And remember you need to plan what you're going to do first. So work out what the stages and the milestones are and then the rest of it should be fairly straightforward. And if you're not sure about the timings, ask your teacher when the final deadline for your assignment is. And then I would suggest going on a week by week basis. So good luck and hope you manage to get a good gun chart and you get good marks for it.